All right, all right, all right, everybody. It's your boy Bo, and I'm back with some more truth and facts. Shout out to the movement, everybody that's moving with us. Also, big shout out to Three Kings Boxing and everybody that's associated with that. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm back with an exclusive interview. Now, I'm going to try to say this name right. Last time I got it right, uh, and I know he appreciated my man Josh Adewale. Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you tried to put an accent on them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, I did. Up and coming. Like you tried to be English. Yeah, yeah hey. English. I, sometimes, you know, I try, man. Uh, sometimes I try to get the, uh, the, the I, I, you know, I try to put my uh, crumpets and tea together and, and, and pretend <laughs> that I'm over in the UK, you know? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> my, accent, my accent is kind of like my spelling, man. It's horrible. <laughs> But uh, yeah, up and coming, rising, I'm amateur fighter. Uh, you still fighting in amateurs, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, up and coming, rising, amateur fighter. And since we last talked to you, a lot has happened, man. I was on vacation, and uh, you you were fighting, and you had a couple fights, man. So tell everybody what's been going on with you, Josh. Yeah, I think um, I think since last time we spoke, um, I've had um. I think three, two or three fights. But mm. um, I entered the ABAs. We spoke about that last time. I ended up en entering them, and um, I, I, the first, my first fight, I ended up coming up against um, somebody that got the decision against me about eighteen months ago. Okay. In um, some other championship, and he he went on to win them. But um, yeah, I come up against him in the first round so yeah that was a bit of a funny one um but um yeah I, and you I won that fight him. though right yeah i beat him unanimous yeah so so you got your was, revenge you got that revenge yeah you know yeah, what the, both, yeah. before you go further let me ask you this man when you saw it was him you was facing did you get extra like amped up like man i've been waiting on this yeah but i was trying to but i was trying to stay composed at the same time so okay. i didn't i didn't want to He's he's from my area as well, so um, yeah, I didn't I didn't want to go into the ring with any emotion, so so I just yeah, I just wanted to get the job done. How hard was that for you to, to like? How hard was it to control yourself? Because you you you're absolutely right. Um, from an emotional standpoint, you can get so amped up emotionally, you can cost yourself the fight. So how hard was it for you to emotionally control yourself? And what did you do to get your emotions back in check? Um, I didn't really. Uh, when I I had a feeling I'd ha I, I, I had a feeling I'd end up having to fight him anyway. But um, when I found out when they done the draw and I found out I was fighting him, um, yeah, um, I don't know. I didn't really think about it too tough, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to get the job done. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, so you entered the tournament. You win the first round. Um, is there another fight that you had after that, or are you, are you still waiting? Yeah, no, I, I had a fight. I had a fight um 15 days ago, okay. and um it was it was in um Huddersfield near Leeds, and um it I didn't I didn't get a decision, but I definitely think it was a bit controversial because um the the guy got a point taken off him for holding. He didn't really, he didn't really want to know. To be honest, he got a point taken off a of holding, and um, they still gave it to him on a split decision. Mm. So, yeah, it was, it was a bit mad. But um, he was from Liverpool, so he was from up north, and that's where I boxed him. And I got told after that all the judges were from up north. So, a coach I know um, put in a complaint because, yeah, the decisions that day weren't, weren't um, too good. To be honest. Okay, now, um, first off, welcome to boxing. <laughs> 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 welcome to boxing. 
Welcome to boxing. That happens. I, I, I can. I couldn't tell you the number of times when I was fighting as an amateur, and uh, there was always a one gym, Windy, uh, Windy City Boxing Gym, and we used to have this old saying: if you don't knock one of them, like if the guy is still standing, he wins the fight. You know, that's what that was the thing with us. Whenever you fought somebody from Windy City Boxing Gym, you had to literally knock them dudes out. If you didn't knock them dudes out, then you know, you wasn't gonna win that fight. That was what we used to say. Um, after that, after that loss and it's controversial um how hard is it and this is just the amateurs it's not even the pros where in the pros there's more at stake there's uh you you could be titles could be on the line and this happened to you but in the amateurs and this happening to you um how hard is it for you to pick yourself up and go to the gym after something like that well funnily enough do you know what um that 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 was the worst that was the worst time i've had it not not in terms of um, the worst decision, but it was the worst time for it to happen because it was in the elite national championships. But you said, how hard was it for me to get back in the gym after? I had the fight. I had the fight on the um, Saturday, and uh, um, I thought I thought I'd have a few days off or whatever. But I had the fight on a Saturday, and then on the Sunday, I was, I was asked if I wanted to go sparring on the Monday to go and spar. Um, Ted Cheeseman, I think he's, I think last time I had a look, he was number 28, top 28 in the world um, as a pro, um, mm. undefeated. So um, I got asked if I wanted to go and spar him on the Monday. So I went on the Monday and went and sparred him, even though I boxed less than 48 hours to go. And um, so, yeah, I basically got back in the gym straight away, to be honest. And um, the coach down there was surprised because they sort of said, like you had a you had a fight in in the national championships less than forty eight hours ago, and you're here sparring. Do you know what I mean? With with like I think he's number four in the country. So like yeah, highly rated professional. But so yeah, I, I was back in the gym literally straight away. Oh okay then. Okay then. Okay then. Um. So that's good. That's good that you, because, you know, most guys, what happens is after something like that, they go home. And when you have time on your hands, you have time to think about it. And it can affect you <coughs> to where you can't get yourself up for it. So it's good that you had that going for you so you got right back in there. Um, looking at that experience that happened to you, and it's, it's in the amateurs, uh, does it give you, does it still, knowing that this is a lower level in the amateurs, what happens when this is the pro game, does it give you, pause a little bit of going pro or you, you you just have that mindset like you know what i'm just taking these as learning lessons or so when i go pro i'll know what to do when this moment arrives again when 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 i'm pro and i've got 10 ounce gloves on yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not letting it go to the to, to the to the decision to be honest but okay so yeah so yeah it's just it's just a learning i guess okay Okay. Um, so, what's next for you, man? Um, well, I've got a fight this Friday. And um, I've got a fight lined up for the 19th of May, the 26th of May. So, I've got three fights lined up as well. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not too sure. I think the season finishes in about two months so um maybe seven weeks or something finishes so um yeah i'm just gonna have to think about things but for now i'm just gonna keep fighting okay and you said you're fighting at uh 70 some kilos which i think is it's like it's it would be like considered our middle weight if i'm not mistaken The um, division you're fighting in, it would be considered like our middleweight division. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is over here in the amateurs, yeah, um, middleweight. It's 75 kilos, so 165 pounds. Okay. Now, I'm I'm sure you're following boxing. I know you heard Tyson Fury is coming back. Um, how are people taking the news in the UK about him coming back? I think... Um, I think most people are excited to see how his comeback is. Obviously, 
I think it may have been. I think it was two years he had out of the ring. So um, yeah, so it's a long time. And obviously he, he ballooned in weight. He went he he went up in weight mm -hmm. a lot, and he's managed to get the majority of it off. So yeah, I think I think most people are excited to see what happens. And did, now, do you think that do you do you think from a business standpoint that they'll 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 <coughs> that you'll see a Joshua Fury before we see Joshua Wilder? Mm, no, I don't think we'll see either of them anytime soon. To be honest, I Whoa, think, okay. I think if anything, I think we'd see Tyson Wilder before we see Joshua with Wilder. Okay, okay. But, Why do you feel like that? Because you know, there's a lot. Because I this is I personally feel like we'll see Fury Joshua be only because you can make 150 million with that fight right there, and then you can make another hundred some million with Wilder. So that's almost 300 million dollars. If I'm a promoter. And I'm looking at that. That's that's like you know my eyes are lighting up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just I just think uh, I only think that because um, obviously I heard Joshua say in his interview that um, he wouldn't be going over to, to to America to fight Wilder, and Tyson Fury went into Klitschko's back garden and fought him. So I could just imagine Fury after getting a few wins. He'd probably mm. happily go over to America and fight Wilder in America. Do you know what I mean? Okay, okay, okay. I see where you're coming from with that. All right. Um, a few, you know, a, a few more things before we close this out, man. Because I know you always busy. You always training. You and Linus Adolfa and my man Marcus. Um, there's another uh, young lady who, uh, who who I know you know. My man John Harding Jr. Hannah Lee Robinson, I gotta get, I gotta get all of you guys, man. I'm trying to get, I gotta get a hold of all of you guys for the interviews, man. And it's just, you know, it's just been wild. But, um, you know, the the amateur game is a little different than what it used to be. I think now when you go to the Olympics, they're not using headgear. Of course, I think in sparring, you guys are still using headgear. Um, have you ever sparred with no headgear? And how much of a difference is it when you don't have that headgear on? Do you feel the punches a little? Uh, do you find it easier to slip the punches? Do the punches feel even? Of course, the punches feel harder, but um, do you find it harder to take the punch? Uh, the punches. I mean, you know, give us your take of it. Um, yeah, I have sparred without head guard before, but um, I wouldn't advise you to really. It's just, um, it's just not necessary. It's better to to use one, obviously. But I have done. I have done several times. Yeah, especially. When they, when they, when I found out we weren't using head guards anymore in fights, obviously I felt, I felt like I had to tr sort of try a spar without a head guard just to see how it would be like in a fight. But um, I, I prefer not wearing a head guard to be honest. I feel like because when you've got a head guard on, even though punches still hurt, I think when you, I think when you haven't got it on, um, you feel. You feel like you need to get out of the way of the punches more, if that makes sense. When you've got a head guard on, sometimes, um, sometimes I, I think it's like you don't really mind taking one to give one. Sometimes, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I prefer not not um, having a head guard on. Okay. In, uh, fight, in uh, fights, I mean. Honestly speaking, with you, man, I've always found it like I've always found it. Uh, sometime I'll spar without it because it does give a more realistic feeling. Yeah, you know, so I, mean, I, I would I would definitely spar without it. But at the same time, there are some people, man. You want to you want to have that joke on for them. <laughs> 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 some people, you you know, some sparring sessions they just too a little bit too wild for you, man. You gotta have you gotta have that joke on, man. <laughs> you don't want to be having with it, be on there without it on. Um, looking uh, looking at. <laughs> your your what you're going through amateur experience uh you know your family um there's a lot that goes with the sport of boxing the training the level of commitment the dieting uh is is there a, is there a part of you sometimes that just like gets frustrated because you see these parties or you see these celebrations you're like ah y'all know i can't eat this food y'all know i can't drink this drink oh y'all wrong and you just want to just tell everybody get out is there a part of you that kind of gets over, kind of, you know, your aggression gets a little up because you're dieting? Or are you one of those, uh, are you one of those guys that, you know, you can diet and remain? Because when, when I used to have to diet, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit irritated. 
are you one of those cats that get a little bit irritated when you're dieting or you just take it like you know this is what i have to do so i'm just taking it as a you know a day by day thing um that's the only thing that um i don't like probably is dieting um the, the whole going out and drinking and I, I don't I don't drink and things like that anyway but yeah that diet diet is my worst thing I don't like making weight and having to diet but it's just part and parcel of it but yeah some people obviously like to have a drink and go out and do all that sort of stuff but that doesn't bother me anyway I just like to eat eat a lot of food to be honest okay okay that's good that's good you you, you and you you definitely it's definitely something that you're gonna um you're gonna want to need to to stay on top of, man. And uh, how's your family doing? And you know, and uh, and 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 how much more of of a support system that they've been for you, even though this is amateurs. How much more of a support system has your family been for you? Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, they've they, my mom. Say my mom out, out of everyone. My mom's out of my family. My mom's been to the most fights and mm-hmm. um but yeah all of my families um my brothers and whoever are supportive yeah so um but i don't know i don't really some people have fights and tell everyone to come and i don't even really do that sort of stuff like i've had i've had fights abroad where i flew out and not even with my coach with me with with coaches that i don't know and i've had fights and things like that so i don't really i don't even I don't need people there or do you know what I mean? I just go and just take care of business. So but yeah. Yeah, every everyone's supportive though, as much as they can be, I guess. Okay then man. Well I'm glad to hear it. I see that you know, like you said, you back. You got a fight coming up, uh you said you got a fight coming up, uh you got a fight coming up soon, correct? Um Friday, yeah. Okay, you got a fight this Friday. Yeah, yeah, Friday. Okay, and uh, you you was recently not feeling well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm not feeling too great at the minute. Yeah, I te- I texted my coach earlier about it. Okay, okay. So you got a fight coming up Friday, uh, man. Um, we expecting some big things out of you, man, and I expect to see you back here on the show again after uh, Friday, telling me about your victory. Yeah, of course. It's only right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, uh, Josh, I want to thank you for being here. Tell everybody where they can find you, man, if they want to catch you on social media and follow your amateur career and your pro career. Well, they can follow me on Twitter, Josh underscore Adewale, A-D-E-W-A-L-E. And on Instagram, it's um the same, Josh underscore Adewale. And on Facebook, it's it's the same, Joshua Adwali, and I've got um I've got a, a a like page on Facebook as well, Joshua Adwali boxing. So if people can give that a like, um, yes, yeah, so all, all the support is appreciated. All right, man, and again, of course, this is Bo uh, at Truth and Facts About Boxing. You can follow me at uh, on Facebook on the YouTube page. Oh, sorry, on the Facebook page, Truth and Facts About Boxing. Also, you can follow me right here on YouTube, Truth and Facts About Boxing along with Twitter and Instagram at capital T for truth underscore capital F for fact box one. Uh, also, you can find the very first interview that I had with Josh that blew up big time. It's going to be blew up big time. So you can find the first interview we did with him. Uh, we hope to get him back on here. Shout out to, uh, I think it's a uh, uh, CM agency. Is, is that who it is? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shout out to CM agency for, uh, of course, reaching out to me and putting me in contact with Josh and helping Josh and a lot of other amateur fighters like, you know, the guys I named John Hardy Jr. and uh, uh, Hannah Lee Robinson. So shout out to them for that. Shout out to my boys at The Movement and 3 com. If you have any uh, uh, articles you want to get published, send them to at, send them to writing at 3 Uh And, man, I want to thank everybody for being here. Josh, thank you so much for taking this time out, man. Look forward to talking to you again. And good luck Friday. And I know you're going to have your hand raised, but I want you to win by knockout, man. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you posted on that one. I'm going to let you know what happens. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks so much for being here, man. I'll talk to you. All right. All right. All right. Bye.